So you have a book and a training session on effective DevOps. What is the single biggest misconception about DevOps right now? The single biggest misconception that I uh, perceive is that DevOps is about individuals. And one of the challenges that I see in our industry is all of the pressure that is put on the individual to attain some sort of mystic uh, full stack engineer or DevOps engineer and the idea that we're turning our industry into this um, place where everyone has to know all of these things. The reality is in a small startup, you have some low number of engineers, so people have to do all of the things, but they're not going to do all of the things well. Mm -hmm. In larger companies, the way that they have become siloed is not good, but the fact that they have roles and boundaries that people are filling to do a thing is good because you, you don't want everybody doing all of the things. You want to have that shared context. So the danger is when we focus on DevOps engineers are worth more money. Well, why are they worth more money? Are they being able to do something that other engineers can't? Or are, they, are we leading into this misconception that people should be doing all of this extra work, which leads to burnouts uh, and other very tragic circumstances that um, I would love for us to avoid, which is why I uh, did a lot of the from here to zero last year um, and continue to promote this idea that we want to get rid of our heroic behaviors in our industry and really focus on how can we uh, impact what we work on and how we work on and work with people. Interesting. When did you first encounter DevOps? So I actually want to scroll back in history a little bit. For me, when I uh, started in the industry, I had a job offer that was a development job and a job offer that was a sysadmin job. Mm -hmm. And so nobody tells you when you're joining the industry that once you join a side of the force, you're no <laughs> longer allowed to be this other thing. And there's all of these expectations. So in my whole career, I felt very frustrated that there was this, well, operations does this and development does this. because. To me, that's not how the real world looks. So in 2007, I got this call. I was at the time at a small uh, anime company that served uh, for, it was a gaming kind of uh, company. Uh, and there was this question that I had. We were serving a million customers per month on a small piece of data. And I had in the back of my mind, what would a big company like Yahoo or Google do? Because this, this technology is not there. Right. And I got this call, and it was Brian Adams, who now works at Intuit. He says, so I would like you to come in to do this potential job. And it's a job where you would do some operations and some development. And the way I described it to people was I would be doing dev Ops. I'd be doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Uh -huh. So when the term came around in 2009, 2010, I actually felt like that's what I've been doing all along. I've never subscribed to this idea that I'm this bastard operator from hell uh -huh. that says no, right? Because that's not where I came from. And so at first, I hated the term. I was like, why are people making up this term that like is just going to add some more segregation, focus on the individual? Mm -hmm. And then in 2012, I went to my first DevOps days. And that DevOps days um, had followed a velocity, actually, that Suzanne Axel, uh, a member of Velocity staff, she had created this environment where, for the first time, I actually interacted with women who also did the same job as me. And so I was already in a state of, wow, my world is changed. And then I go to DevOps days, and again, my world was changed, and people are collaborating, and I realized this is not just about me. It's not about how I do work. It's about how we do work and coming together as a community, not just being isolated individuals trying to change how our work is done. And that was when it clicked for me, was 2012, DevOps days, people working together and talking about things. Do you feel, there's been some talk recently about DevOps needing a manifesto or some type of firm definition. What's your take on that? So I feel that it is uh, repeated through history time and time again where we have these different patterns. I don't think we need a manifesto because we see how people react to that. The reality is that 
everything um, that we look at and we talk about, there's certain words that are just folk models. Internal to our communities, we have these ideas and concepts that we want to embrace. And so, for example, if you ask like 10 different people in the industry, what is configuration management? They'll say something like puppet or chef or some other example. And that's not configuration management. That's like just pointing to a product. Mm -hmm. What we're really talking about with configuration management, we need to actually have words. Now with DevOps, it's there is a, a use in having common terminology, but where it's common should be within a particular company embracing the stories or myths that connect each other and how they're going to work. And so if we go and look at total quality management or agile, all of these manifestos, people hate them because they're not involved in the story. So if we're able to say, no, DevOps is much more loosely coupled. Instead, we're talking about this uh, fabric that we're weaving of technical and cultural pieces to create something that anybody can be part of. Mm -hmm. We're embracing everyone's story. And that is where I think the power of DevOps comes from. It's inclusivity, right? It's inclusivity. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so the cultural part of DevOps, where did that come from? Was it always there or has it emerged? I feel that for me, it has always been there, but I also started getting involved in the community later. To me, when I first started getting in the community, I noticed that there was a lack of certain elements. Um, there weren't as many women. And I have seen over time as the culture is like, like a key component of DevOps and something that all companies should embrace when they're doing DevOps initiatives, it being incremental iterative changes, I think that's also been part of the DevOps uh, community. And I think it's become more and more awareness, and that's a power of not having a rigid manifesto. Hmm. So I think it has changed. Interesting. Kind of picking up on that, how has DevOps changed over the last couple of years, two to three? More and more... Uh, diversity and inclusivity in the arena. There's also been a large number of players that have come into the uh, community that are kind of trying to distract it towards, we need to have this rigid order and it must be this and I'm going to sell you this. Um, that's adding some distraction, but the core community, I think, is very much changing in terms of the context. There's when I look at it, there's a lot more powerful women voices that are there. There's more people of different backgrounds that are speaking up and sharing. We're embracing security. We're embracing the community facts. I mean, one of the things that I love about Chef is that we have such a strong community presence and we value our community engineers very highly. We want to encourage people to not just think of it from a perspective of, hey, we're or you're buying something. We want it to be like we're changing the world. We're changing how we work. We're changing how much we value the people that are part of the industry. What people or projects are you following these days? So it's very interesting. One of the factors that I love about Twitter is that uh, Velocity plus Twitter to me was how I really came to love Twitter in terms of the ability to engage with the hallway track all the time. So on Twitter, I'm able to learn about new technologies, um, and that's really useful. But when it comes to people and projects, what I am focused on is discovering new voices. To me, uh, there's a lot of focus on all these big projects, all of these things that are happening, but what's really interesting are the people that are being able to speak up that are new into the industry. So Jamisha Fisher is from Cloud Passage. She is uh, DevOps, but also security. And to me, that is really amazing. I'm looking forward to see how she transforms the industry, the, the unique perspective she has to bring. Uh, Julie Gunderson, who's from Taos Consulting, last night she uh, talked about sparkly DevOps princesses and bringing your sparkle. And it was just really powerful how we as the, an industry and the people that are getting involved can start talking about all of these different pieces but what's missing. Because there's, for so long, a challenge 
of uh, the industry is how fragile and brittle particular te technologies can be. I think it's partly because we don't have enough diverse voices and, and experiences. So to answer your question very in a long form, I'm, I, I'm looking for those voices that maybe people haven't seen or the, mm -hmm. these new voices that just have incredibly powerful vision. Last question for you. Tell me about the button that I'm wearing. This button that you're wearing, it's uh, the Sparkly DevOps Princess, and it's encouraging uh, individuals to embrace their internal sparkle, what makes them different, and share their voice. One of the things I found myself a few years ago thinking was that uh, I saw people using the word princess, and I, I said something in jest, and I realized, wait, I'm one of those people that is using this gendered term in a negative way, and I realized, like, I, I wanted to hack this. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make it mean something more. So when we talk about princesses, we're talking about people that are strong, people that are daring. Uh, and I really loved the Ignite that Julie Gunderson gave last night on this particular topic because it's about encouraging women and other different voices to speak up and be part of the industry and not just saying, well, you must fit this, this particular prototype. You must be like this wearing a business suit. You look quite <laughs> nice, but uh, yeah, we want different Looks people. Looks better with a button, right? It totally right. does. Right. It even matches. Great. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. I really enjoyed this.